Hello dear students. Today we are going to start with Amnesty, a chapter from Module 4 of Zaid Geist. Amnesty is written by Nadan Gaudama, a South African writer, a political activist and is also the winner of Nobel Prize for Literature. Amnesty is a work set in South Africa during the time of apartheid regime. Let's get into the slides. Nadan Gaudemar was born in the year 1923 in Johannesburg. She was a South African writer. Her parents belonged to British descent. From her early childhood, she saw, she witnessed how the white people were weakening the rights of black majority, how they were oppressed. And she wrote about the racial segregation in her works. Her writings dealt with moral issues, racial issues, particularly about apartheid. She wrote particularly about apartheid in South Africa. She was active in the anti-apartheid movement and thus her two works, Burger's Daughter and July's People were banned. She was also a founding member in the Congress of South African Writers. She was a supporter of African National Congress and she worked very hard to free Nelson Mandela from prison and she maintained a close relationship until his death. She also helped people during the time of apartheid. She helped people across the border. She passed messages for her and she also assisted those people who were trying to escape the police force. And she died in the year 2014 in Johannesburg. We look into some of her famous works, Face to Face, The Lying Days, The Conservationist, Burger's Daughter, July's People, A Spot of Nature, My Son's Story, The House Gun, The Pickup, Get a Life. The Nobel Committee has told God Godimer as a writer and his writing has been a very great benefit to humanity. Her writing has been a benefit to mankind because she was writing about the real things. She was actually fighting against the apartheid in her works. She criticized the white society for their mistreatment of millions. And according to her, art cannot be defeated. Art represents life. Art represents the celebration of life. Art cannot be destroyed. And I told you, during the time of apartheid, the people suffered a lot. Black people suffered a lot. It was started in 1948. It was designed to allow different races to develop on their own white people were there black people were there and laws were different for whites and blacks it forced black south africans into poverty and hopelessness because they couldn't uh, own a land they cannot own property and they were forced to work on the lands of white people and they were, were not they couldn't avail money to take care of their family and uh, it was illegal for the black people not to carry a passbook. They all, always have to carry passbook. And black people couldn't marry white people. They were not allowed to set up businesses in white areas. So these were some of the things that were was happening, that were happening at the time of apartheid. And they couldn't enter into certain places where whites have had permissions. And coming to Amnesty, the work. It is a short story that was originally published in uh, the New Yorker in 1991 and it was later included in Jump and other stories and the work 
in 2009 was included in the anthology freedom we can see the narrator of the work is a young south african woman a young woman and the author is introducing to us the fiance of the nameless protagonist the narrator is introducing the fiance of the nameless protagonist we didn't we don't have a name here because this man symbolizes many many millions in south africa during that time and the plight of this woman we can see plights of this woman in the work and this plight does not alone to this woman it is common to all the people to all the blacks who suffered at that time we can see the flashback goes in first person narrator usage of i for example when we heard he was released i ran all over i talking from the subjective point of view first person narrator her fiance was arrested for inciting riots among workers they were working in a construction company and uh, he was arrested for inciting riots it was in town and uh, we can see the story of her fiance's freedom from imprisonment fiance when he was arrested and we can see his freedom also from imprisonment and the work portrays the racial division in africa her style the work writing style is sharp and unsentimental and incisive style we can see the emotionally and physically affected women in um, the narrator and also in the uh, person who is arrested his mother and prisoners are subjected to close surveillance in the prison they couldn't write they can write letters but the letters were read by police officers or uh, letters were read by the people in the prison in charge of prisons and uh, the work shows the devastating effects of political persecution shows devastating or uh, uh, bad effects or this um, bad effects or devastating effects of political persecution how the people were ill treated and the effects of those ill treatment we can see in the work we can see the work moves in a personal way that denoting the personal problems and also political things that denoting the racist tendencies or apartheid time in africa apartheid was a system of discrimination on the grounds of race that i told you about the problems they faced that time amnesty it's a short story uh, yeah i told you it was published in new yorker in 1991 in the collection it was included in the collection jump and other stories and we can see uh, actually the text is uh, the work on text is the work on work work situation or work uh side and the, about the fair wages our uh, man the person who was in the prison he, he was working in the town he was working in a construction company and their wages the problems of their wages and um, they were into a strike when he joined a union and um, uh, a persons were terminated um after the strike about wages and uh, he just asked about that termination and he was also imprisoned and though it is a work the text is about work and fair wages it is also a critique of apartheid and racial segregation of that time and amnesty is the official pardon for people who have been convicted of political offense an official pardon for people we can see this person our um, narrator's fiance in the prison and he gets freedom and he gets official pardon after some time uh, and he's been out of jail when we heard he was released i ran all over the farm and through the fence to our people on the next farm to tell everybody i only saw afterwards i had torn my dress on the barbed wire and there was a scratch with blood on my shoulder the person got released from jail in the excitement the narrator went all over the farm and through the fence to tell people that he was released from jail out of her excitement 
but her dress had torn on the barbed wire he went away now the narrator is going to tell the story why he was put in jail and the rest he went away from this place 9 years ago signed up to work in town with what they call a construction company building glass walls up to the sky so the person was working with a construction company and he went 9 years back from the village to work in town so it has been 9 years that she is alone for the first 2 years he came home for the weekend once a month and 2 weeks at christmas so he came back in his uh, vacations that was when he asked my father for me and he began to pay in certain tribal societies of africa they have a system of bride price that the bridegroom will give money to the parents of bride so he started to give money and he and i thought that in 3 years he would have paid enough for us to get married so they thought in 3 years the person would be giving money so that they can get married but then he started wearing that t-shirt he told us he had joined the union so he had joined the workers union he told us about the strike and strikes were also going there going on there against white people this is africa the time of apartheid he was one of the men who went to talk to the bosses and he was in the union and he went to talk to the bosses because some others had been laid off after the strike so the strikes were going on against white and certain members were terminated after the strike and he went to talk to the white people about their termination he has always been good at talking even in english he is an educated person he knew english he was at the best at the farm school he used to read the newspapers the indian rap soap and sugar in when you buy at the store he had a habit of reading newspapers and he was aware of the things that were that were happening around him there was trouble at the hostel where he had a bed and riots over paying rent in the townships so in the town there were many problems about uh, riots were also happening on the issue of rent he told me just me not the old ones or to her, to her father that wherever people were fighting against the way we are treated wherever people were fighting against the way the blacks are treated and the union members were doing it for all of us were doing it for all the blacks on the farms as well as towns and the unions were with them he was with them the person was with them and he was making speeches marches and all the third year we heard he was in prison so they thought after 3 years they'll be getting married but the third year the narrator heard he was in prison instead of getting married we didn't know where to find him until he went on trial so only on the time of trial they found him the case was heard in a town far away i couldn't go often to the court because by that time i had passed my standard aid and i was working in the farm school she was also educated and she was working in the farm school and she couldn't go often to the court because of her job why she wanted to go to the court because his trial was going on the fiance's trial was going on also my parents were short of money that's why also they couldn't go to court two of my brothers who had gone away to work in town didn't send home brothers also couldn't send money i suppose they lived with girlfriends and had to buy things for them so the brothers also had to give money bird pri- bright price say so that they have to save money so they couldn't give money to their homes my father and other brother work here for the boar and the pay is very small so her father and other brother so she got 
two three brothers altogether three brothers and the other brother work here for the boar boars are the landowners okay a member of dutch population settled in south africa towards 17th century and they are the land owning people in south africa these people cannot own lands in their place they cannot own the lands instead the white minority was owning the land so they were working in the boar field and the pay is very small we have two goats a few cows we are allowed to graze and a patch of land where my mother grew vegetables but no cash they could gain from that when i saw him in the coat he looked beautiful in a blue suit with a striped shirt at brown tie all the accused his comrades he said were well dressed all the accused people all the members who were arrested in the union were well dressed the union bought the clothes for them so that the judge and the prosecutor would know they weren't dealing with stupid yes bars black men who didn't know their rights so the union people were conscious about how they were presented before court so they bought the clothes so the judge and the prosecutor will not consider them as illiterate people it is their consideration they of their way of thinking about black men as stupid who uh, who doesn't who don't know to speak in english but the person and the other members maybe they are educated they knew english and so they were presented well well dressed before these people and they know their rights here it is written who black men certain black men that were there who didn't know their rights but these members in the union know their rights these things and everything else about the court and trial he explained to me when i was allowed to visit him in jail while she visited him in jail he told about all these procedures a little girl was born while the trial went on and when i brought the baby to court the first time to show him his comrades hugged him and then hugged me across the barrier of the prisoner's dock and this is the time a small uh, happiness to the narrator too they were not they were not married yet they brought the baby to court for the first time and his comrades hugged him and then hugged me across the barrier of the prisoner's dock what an emotional trauma that she undergone at that time right she couldn't uh, she was only through the barriers they could meet each other or greet each other and they had clubbed together to give me some money as a present for the baby and they had some money as a present to the baby the union members were there right so they gave they had clubbed together money and he chose the name for her and the man fiance chose the name for their daughter inkululeko that means freedom inkululeko that means freedom then the trial was over and he got 6 years so his trial was over now and he was sentenced for 6 years he was sent to an island we all knew about the island our leaders had been there so long that is the reference to robben island it was the island where a prison was there a notorious prison and other political prisoners were also there and people were sent to that island when they got imprisonment a leaders had been there so long political leaders had been in the island because they were imprisoned but i have never seen the sea except to color it in blue at school but our narrator didn't see a um, sea and i couldn't imagine a piece of earth surrounded by it she cannot imagine a place where water is surrounded by it and people are living in that place i could only think of a cake of dung dropped by the cattle floating in a pool of rain water they had crossed the water showing the sky like a looking glass blue 
she could just imagine a cake of drunk uh, in a pool of rain water she couldn't imagine an island which is surrounded by um, only water i was ashamed only to think that he had told me how the glass walls showed the pavement trees and the other buildings in the street and the colors of the cars and the clouds as the crane lifted him on a platform higher that remember he was working as a worker in the construction company crane lifted him on a platform higher and higher through the sky to work at the top of a building he was allowed one letter a month it was my letter because his parents didn't know how to write now the narrator is speaking about the person is in the island and he could allow to write a letter in a month it was her letter because um, his parents didn't know to write she went to school and she had passed her standard 8 remember all these things i used to go to them to visit his parents where they worked on another farm to ask what message they wanted to send they were all all working in a farm and uh, she went to that farm and asked about what letter or what the thing they need to write the mother always cried the emotion of women mother always cried and put her hands on her head their trauma because their loved ones it is really affecting their individual life, lives uh, their loved ones in a jail they couldn't see their persons loved ones even the narrator couldn't see her fiance um, the person the mother cannot live with her live with her son all these are traumas um, of women individual women uh, the black people are oppressed by white minority even and they are not considered about the emotional aspects of these people too they just want power in their hands the mother always cried and put her hands on her head and said nothing and the old man the father who preached to us in the weld every sunday weld is an open um, farm or grassland in south africa there he used to preach on every sundays sunday uh, people gather around to for prayer and he preached people and said to the person said to a narrator that tell my son that we are all praying and god will make everything all right for him so don't worry and the person in the prison got irritated by reading um the narrator's letter which said the father told don't worry we are all praying for him then he wrote back that is the trouble our people on the farms they are told god will decide what's good for them so that they won't find the force to do anything to change their lives if god is doing everything for them they will sit just idle will not doing anything it's a criticism against religion that god will do everything they have they have just need to be sit idle actually the, he is a person against that ideology he too has to work for to make everything correct after 2 years had passed so 6 years he was in prison so after 2 years we that is his parents and the narrator saved up enough money to go to cape town to visit him he is in the island so they have to go to cape town first he went by we went by train and slept on the floor at the station and they also faced many problems at the station they didn't they have to sleep on the floor and uh, they went and asked the way next day to the ferry like at the cape town they asked um the way to the ferry and people were kind they all knew that if you wanted the ferry it was because you had somebody of yours on the island and people knew they were not in prison for any criminal things uh, people knew they were in prison for the right things they were demanding for their rights that's why people were imprisoned so people were also kind for them and there it was there was the sea so they are there at the ferry to take um, a boat to an island to that island to roben island and there she saw the sea and now it is a description of sea it was green and blue climbing and falling wave waves were climbing and falling bursting while all the way to the sky a terrible wind was slapping it this way and that it hit the island 
but people like us waiting for the ferry pointed where the island must be and they were pointed where the island must be it would be far out in the sea that i never thought would be like it really was she couldn't imagine the piece of earth surrounded by water already said that and she never thought would be like it island would be like it as it really was there were other boats and ships as big as buildings that go to other places there were other boats and ships to other places too all over the world but the ferry was only for the island it doesn't go anywhere else in the world the ferry was only to robin island so everybody waiting there was waiting for the island so their near ones loved ones are there in the island there could be no mistake we were not in the right place so everybody was waiting there so they're all in the right place there will be no mistake they are in the correct place we had sweets and biscuits trousers and a warm coat for him so the they had bought sweets for the person biscuits trousers and warm coat only when the loved ones are coming they'll be getting all these things right so their love and care this person or the woman and his par and his parents had for him that is evident a woman standing with us said we wouldn't be allowed to give him the clothes and a person said uh, they are not allowed to give him clothes and i wasn't wearing any more the old beret pulled down over my head that farm girls wear beret that is used a round cloth pulled down over my head that farm girls usually wear and i had bought bought a relaxer cream from the man who comes around the farms uh, selling things and she also bought a relaxer cream from a man and my hair was combed up thick under a flowered scarf that didn't cover the gold colored rings in my ears and she had a scarf with her which she was wearing and uh, a beret she pulled down and um, his mother had her blanket tied round her waist over her dress mother also had a blanket tied round her waist a farm woman she looked like but i looked just as good as any of the other girls there so she dressed up and good and when the ferry was ready to take us because they were going to she was going to meet her beloved and she dressed up good she looked just as good when the ferry was ready to take us we stood all pressed together they were all closed together because they are going into a ferry they have to get into that and quiet like the cattle waiting to be let through a gate there's a reference of animal comparison is there no uh, so it also denotes that how low their status what uh, how low their status was they are compared to animals too they they will not be used this term to compare a group of white people they'll be using any other polished terms so uh, our author deliberately used this term because to denote their low status like the cattle waiting to be let through a gate one man kept looking round with his chin moving up and down so a person was there looking up and down he was counting he was counting something he must have been afraid there were too many to get on and he didn't want to be left behind the narrator is thinking maybe he the person would be afraid that a lot of people were there so there will not there will not be as much space maybe he will not he will be left behind that is what narrator is saying he we all moved up to the policeman who was counting in charge and everyone ahead of us went on to the boat so everybody just got into the boat they didn't get in but when our turn came we were just going to enter the boat and he put a, put out his hand for something he just um, extended his arms i didn't know what and really the narrator was confused why he is extending his arms 
we didn't have a permit now she is explaining the reason we didn't have a permit we didn't know that before you come to cape town before you come to the ferry for the island you have to have a police permit to visit a prisoner on the island they should have a police permit to visit the prisoners i try to ask him nicely uh, like camp like we don't know these things can i come to, can we come too the wind blew the voice out of my mouth but no words were coming out because of my uh, a shock or because of her emotional status she was so excited to visit him but uh, she didn't know about uh, the police permit so now she became to know she couldn't meet the loved one what a situation no it just hurts us too she couldn't um, meet the person so there were no words coming out maybe emotion has filled in her tears in in her eyes in the form of tears we were turned away we were disappointed really disappointed we saw the ferry rock bumping the landing where we stood moving lifted and dropped by all that water getting smaller and smaller so boat went far distant until we didn't know if we we're really seeing the boat or one of the birds that looked black dipping up and down out there so they were really so at the sea uh, the author is speaking about the narrator is saying that uh, in the vast sea they could see the boat is getting smaller and smaller as it goes um, as it goes as it covers much distance in the sea and boat looked like a bird one of the bird that looked black dipping up and down out there the only good thing was one of the other people took the sweets and biscuits for him so the other people were uh, good enough to take the sweets and biscuits it denotes the relationship between uh, that existed in the community a community bond uh, was there they were all seen as one all together a togetherness a um, sharing a feeling of oneness they were in the community too that is why they have taken the sweets and biscuits for the person he wrote and said he got them but it wasn't a good letter even though that person would be you know in an emotional trauma that he couldn't see the fiance right it wasn't a good letter because um or he should have chided her of course not he was cross with me he was annoyed he was really annoyed i should have found out i should have known about the permit he she is an educated person she should she should have known about the permit his parents mustn't because they are they didn't know about all these things but she's an educated person so she's also working in the farm school so she should have known about the permit he was right i bought train tickets i asked where to go for the ferry i should have known about the permit too it is my ignorant mistake i have passed standard aid there was an advice office to go to in town the churches ran it churches ran an advice office too he wrote these things were um, were ignorant for the lady for the narrator but the person knows these things there was an advice office so church is ran it so you have to go and inquire all these things but the farm is so far from the town we on the farms don't know about these things it was as he said our ignorance is the way we are kept down we couldn't meet because of our ignorance this ignorance must go we took the train back and we never went to the island so we couldn't meet him never saw him in the three morias he was there when he was an island we couldn't see him not once at least again the emotional problems the pers- the woman was left behind women or women actually always needs care and they always needs so some they always love to be together uh, it adds their confidence even though what we we proclaim about the confidence the power of women and all normally because of their circumstances women always need care that is their mindset they always need care and they always needs their loved ones to be together but here she couldn't see him not once we couldn't find the money for the train 
they are working in the bore field they didn't get enough money too his father died and i had to help his mother from my pay so she had to give to give money to his mother too for our people the worry is always money but because they didn't get enough money from the farm itself the bore people will not give them ample money i wrote when will we ever have money then he sent such a good letter that's what i am on the island for i was in the reunion i'll continue in the union far away from you i am here so that one day our people will have the things they need one day our people a community a black community will have all the things land food and it will be the end of ignorance that they will be educated see uh, end of ignorance see here there is a criticism against the um, what the education system also there the people uh, are not getting good education too um, she has passed standard 8 and she is ignorant about the things that are happening around maybe the, she is not uh, getting enough things uh, that is why she is ignorant of maybe she is not getting newspapers that is why she is ignorant of so they have less access to many things that is that should also be entered there was something else i could just read the word power the prison had blacked out power he had wrote in the letter the power i'm here so that one day our people will have the things they need land for the end of ignorance there was something else they need land food and power was there but it was blacked out by the person the white people all these letters were not just for me the prison officer read them bef before i could the prison officer read all his all the letters of the prisoners then only it was posted out so he striked the word power why because white people doesn't want to give up the power they don't want to give power to white black people or they just don't want to leave the country the black to black people they just want to hold power with them they just want to hold power always with them and now he was coming home after only five years.